colors for highlighting in this tattoo you see there's a uh, color has been used to, to create the highlights like the yellow around it uh, it gives it a soft a touch uh, sometimes white is not always the best color to highlight i think it's an essential uh, i think it should always be white because it gives it the friendliness and the eye accepts it that it, it really uh, um, uh, uh, isn't used to see white in the skin so i would uh, 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 still use it but it's just a a great way to create a colorful tattoo where you say like okay i use instead of using a white here i use a little colored white like it has a little greenish tint so it makes it soft in the piece if you would do this completely white it would be like screaming at you so in this case if you use a little like yellowish in it or maybe even like a little green it gives it a softer tone as you see in here this white is not completely white because it's just it has a little yellow in it it's a little softer than everything else um i would like to come to some part what you should try in the in the uh, maybe next week in you know to do some new practices to improve your shading um i think it's it's, it's very great take pictures during the process to see how you work in stages so if you work for somebody or if, if, if you work on a tattoo on somebody and you start shading make some pictures we always make pictures at the end of the tattoo you don't want to do it at the end of the tattoo. make some doing the tattoo because our eye is getting so trained to see the finished tattoo that we forget sometimes what we created during the work make some pictures check them out and be open to yourself always always use wet wiping techniques i'm telling you train it's gonna tell you or it's gonna take you about i think two weeks for three weeks to really train your brain to make it a habit to use a little moist towel to wipe and wipe very soft everything should feel like the touch of the feather that's what i learned over 30 years which was a significant change in my colors because it, it just goes in easy it stays in it heals bright it gives you an option that you really can work on your creativity instead of chasing redness and blood and swelling and the customers getting irritated it, like it 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 really empowers you as an artist to become the best you can be and that's really the outcome of this so this should be the outcome to really empower you that the best you can be that's really what's important for me here you know and then pre-mix your own gray uh, take a lining black uh, 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 get like a, a different different bottles and put 60% lining black in and add by one 20% shading solution to it and add by one 10% rose water to it 10% witch hazel go to your pharmacy try to see what it is use some distilled water play with it spread it out over paper see how you like it uh, uh, see what the undertones is, uh, are and then let us know you know I mean give us some feedback give us let us know what you learned it's really important for us to know too uh, what color you see what shade you see make this make those three points your job for this for the for the next coming week don't wait till the new year nobody follows through with a new year resolution before the new year start try that it's important it's like it's gonna open up your eyes and it's gonna really make you a little bit more understanding um that's so far for the first part what i can do in the shading i know it's already an hour and a half and, and, and I'm gonna be answering some more questions for you for a little bit, like um, like another 10 minutes, and then basically gonna go and, 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 and be more direct, and then um, we can work on this a little bit. Uh, also, this uh, uh, um, this uh, seminar is gonna be, or, or, or everything is spoke for, the whole slideshow is gonna be available for you. So stay on with me until uh, uh, after the, the questions, I really wanna wanna answer them really quick because there's a couple of really really strong ones in it, and I want you all to hear it because it's really from all of our our uh, 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 benefit to really go through that. You know, um, what effect does rose water and witch hazel have? Witch hazel has a little calming uh, 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 effect on the skin. Rose water is something a little thicker. It's not like water. It's a little thicker texture to it. So it helps you a little bit to uh, um, uh, get a better feel of the of 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 the friend, you know. Um, there's another question. Yeah, I mean, I have to answer that. What makes an intense uh, uh, a so superior product? Uh, what it really does is it, it's it's like it's. I think it makes it so, so superior 
because I use it. I try it every single day. And 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 as I said earlier, it's like it it it's but but us quality is the key. I mean, again, there's so many products out there. A, 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 a lot of them are great, and a lot of them are also not great. A lot of them are used with cheap materials, and it's really handicapping our tattoo artists around the world to really create the potential what they should be or could be. You know, just because of like false information or not the right product. So that's really really why I think in in in, in intensity. So superior to other people, you know, uh, or, or other products. Okay, one question from Pelon Villa Gomez. I think that's the right name. Um, I I use three different kinds of flag for shading, including tribal. Uh, hold on, this is so fast. And so I'm tribal ink makes a mess. Uh, if I do it on light ink, what's your advice? Okay. Um, I don't know really what it is, but if you use tribal ink, I, I, I assume that tribal ink is a, is a very strong black ink. And if it makes a mess, yes, because it's maybe not meant to be diluted to a shading effect. It's maybe meant to be uh, 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 to be a black product on in the skin. So if you dilute it too much, it's going to make a mess. It smears around. It's going to extend its like gray shading uh, uh, ability. So also, use a little better towel than if you use a wet paper towel or if you use a wet uh, a, a moisturizing towel then it's gonna work easier for you um when creating gray wash what kind of formula if any should be followed jay um i think you should follow whatever works for you great i gave you a couple options for uh, earlier i said like use 60 percent of the of the lining plaque Add 20% to it, add another 20% to it, and another 20% and try to fill, uh, uh, fill it out. There's people out there which use very specific mixtures like Bob Tyrell or, or Mark Mahoney, uh, or you know what I mean? I mean, those are unbelievable black and gray artists. That's the reason why we work with them. Uh, that's the reason why our intense team has such a high bar. We set the bar really, really high for our artists we work with uh, 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 just to like, to get challenges, you know, for all of us, for you, for me, for everybody out there, because those are the people we want to follow, those are the people we want to try to work on, and those are people which master their field, they master their tools, they master their, their secrets, you know, and we work with this, and this is really where all of us are, 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 are very, like, help, you know, because we believe in intense, that all the users are part of the intense team. Like me, you, every single question what comes in right now is really part of the intense team because that's really showing, that's the people which really want to make a change in this industry. Um, a lot of our pigments are thick, uh, a lot of your pigments are thick. How much mixing white should be used so it's not changing the color? Okay, Dustin, um, our colors, certain colors are thick and certain colors are thin. Uh, uh, it's like, it's a, it's a heavier pigment load because like white is a thicker color because it's like a bigger, like a thicker pigment in general. Um, if you add white to it without changing the color, it should be less than 10%. And you have to be very, very specific with it. So if you take like, let's say a um, four ounce bottle, then I would be like, you know, having less than 10% of white in it. That's what I would add, say where it doesn't really change the color too much, visible. It does change the color though already. Um, when the color is darker though, let's say a more darker complex color as a dark purple and you add 10% of white to it in a four ounce bottle, not much is gonna change in the color because the dark purple is just too strong. Um, also, when you have a really light color, let's say like a light yellow, uh, what happens is if you, if you add a white to it, like 10% of it, you're not going to see it because the color is too light to actually visualize that it had a change, but it will have a change when you put it in the skin. Um, I use premix gray washes like, like Silverback, but I always end up using Intense Super Black to make my own gray wash. Laura Strat, great. Uh, obviously, you found a way to uh, find something what really is, is great for you. Uh, you did your research, you trialed it, everybody else should do the same. That's the way what makes a difference, you know? Um, how do you get very smooth, great transitions over huge areas on the back of thigh? Carlos, very, very good question. Um, it, it, you can achieve this with pre-mixed grays, that's the number one. So you're gonna go and take the lightest gray and try to put a solid area uh, 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 in your skin or, or in the skin of your client. 
So you use, let's say, an extra light gray wash and you make a solid air, like make it just like working it like if you would do a solid red spot on the back. Let's just say that it would be like a circle for five inches. Just work it in like you would do it with a solid red spot. That's what you use a light gray with. And then when you want to add some shades to it, let it heal, shade on top of it. Or if the skin is not overworked, if you did it right and you worked it like a feather, you touch the skin like you want to make love to it, you know, instead of like hammering it all night, then you can add the second layer of shade on top of it and it's going to be a great effect to you. You're going to see. I'm uh, going to take a couple more questions and then I want to let you guys know something about how you can get this seminar and what else we have for you. We have some really, really good stuff for you afterwards. Um, do you think I can practice the overlaying shading process with oils or acrylic painting? Patrick, really interesting question. I believe you can. Um, uh, um, uh, not that I'm an expert in painting in acrylics or oil, but I think those have the, the advantage that you can go over it and if you don't like it then you know it didn't work but what you should maybe try to achieve with it see if you can make your acrylic colors more transparent so maybe you want to mix them up a little bit that they get translucent and then overlay it uh or you can try it with watercolors you know try to lay a yellow down with watercolors and then just take a little orange and go on top of it let it dry and then lay an orange on top uh, or, or, or green on top and see what happens. So I think that's, this is how I would do it. Unfortunately, in my case, or fortunately, over 30 years, I was uh, fortunate enough to try all my trials and errors on clients, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, on myself, you know, I mean, I work on my, on my leg. Uh, it looks like the, it looks like a little dotty point in my whole leg is full of thoughts uh, because I try every single thing that I want to try out on myself first so I can see how it heals and how it comes out. Um, let me see, I have another question here. Going from light to dark, should areas for highlights with white be done first or should the area be left alone to be white added at the end of tattoo? Very, very good question. Uh, the question was from Charm. Um, I think it goes in both directions. If you have the knowledge already where you're gonna put a white area, leave it open. If you don't have it, just go on and uh, um, uh, uh, do it at the end, you know, just keep in mind when you put it on at the end on uh, uh, everything that it's going to go and um, it's going to look a little bit muddier. So it's not going to, when, when, when you have to use a larger white area on top of color, it's going to be that the color underneath is going to shine through. So it's going to look, when you put it on a red, it's going to look a little pinkish. If you're going to use it just as a dot, like in an eyeball, and you're going to use it, then it's not going to make a difference because it's just one top and the surface of the white is not big enough to shine through. Um, okay, so the last the last question I have, uh, uh, I'm going to take and then I'm going to go further is uh, what is the difference in your snow white mixing and the snow white uh, opaque, Bobby? It says it in the name of the, of the color. A snow white mixing is a white which is meant to mix with color. So if you take a red and you want to make it pinkish, then you use the Snow White mixing. It's a, it's a more thinner version, which is easier to blend with the red. If you take the opaque white, it's a very concentrated version of white. It's a thicker version. So a thicker version makes it harder to blend with the red. So you're better off using the Snow White mixing because it gives it that easier way of mixing the two colors together and it keeps it liquid. Otherwise, you're gonna have a too thick of a color and you run into a challenge that it's gonna try out on you. Um, all the other questions which I didn't answer, uh, I would like to let you know that uh, um, uh, I will answer them uh, uh, and, and we'll send it out to you or, or, or you know, you guys can get it back on intenseproducts.com or, or intensetattooing.com. I'm gonna answer all the questions. I'm gonna make it's hundreds of questions, so it's like I'm gonna go through. This is maybe more than ever, and 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 um, um, uh, we're gonna see that we can do the the, the part in it. I also wanna show you guys something before the year is over. I wanna uh, uh, if you don't have anything yet, like in shading or shading solutions or essential silvers, which are unbelievable to to use or you know like like Bob Ty Ty Tyrell's colors or, or Mark Mahoney's this is really essential for for a, a black and gray usage 
and also to like explore your new techniques in like like silverish tattooing that it has that sub, a, a velvet shine to it. Uh, um, there's there's products we have at at, in, at Intense Products. You can check it out. Uh, uh, this is not a sales pitch. This is just like this is available for you guys. You can do it right now. It's 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 it, it's fresh in your mind. You guys have it right now. You're ready to try it. Uh, 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 those are products with, with, which really going to help you out to take it to the next level and do where you know the the guesswork is already taken out of the product. Now it's really just on exploration.